of designing and, and uh, planning for the, the construction of safe rooms at our uh, eight remaining elementary schools that do not have one and two middle schools that do not have a safe room. Uh, that would be all the elementary schools except for Ida Barnes and of course that, was con that safe room was constructed when we did the significant uh, work there. And Ruth Doyle and Simon already have safe rooms so we're looking at Port Way and also at, at Carl Stewart. And so this evening, I bring to you the opportunity for us to uh, begin the process of borrowing money. Uh, this money uh, that we will borrow is approximately $10 million. Uh, by the way, Scott Beersley is not here this evening because he's at another school district making a similar presentation. And uh, so he, he tried to coach me through some things and, and I'll try to answer any questions you might have. If, if not, then I can uh, get back with you tomorrow after talking to Scott if there's a question that, that I can't answer. Uh, but we are asking you to approve the sale of second lien bonds. Second lien bonds are similar to uh, a second mortgage on your home. Uh, they basically are looking at, at the opportunity of borrowing additional money based on the millage that we are currently have. We are not asking our patrons to increase the millage. We're not asking for any restructuring of the millage at all. We're asking only uh, for the permission to, part, or to uh, borrow additional uh, money, bonds money. And we would like to do that at, in the amount of $10 million because Scott says that um, ten, less than $10 million, $10 million or less are what's called bank qualified loans, which means they qualify for a lower percentage rate than if we went over $10 million. It's totally possible, Board, that a year from now we may need to come back and ask for a little bit more based on the, our construction of the two middle school safe rooms. But for the purpose of, of, of uh, interest rate uh, and also for the purpose of we really don't need it, that, that money right now because we're not going to construct the two at the middle school. Uh, so there's not a need to borrow that. We're going to wait on that until perhaps a year from now. But we'll keep you posted about how much we actually need at that point. So we're going to ask tonight for your approval of the sale of $10 million bonds in accordance with the motion that I think that you have before you. Uh, but also, just to give you a little bit more uh, information as far as the timeline, we will ask for you to approve it to this month. In March, the application will go to the state board. In April, the state board will uh, hopefully approve that. And then in early May, Scott will bid those bonds out. Uh, and then at some point, uh, he will call during that day after he's uh, done gone through the bidding process, and he will ask me to approve and accept a low bid. Uh, and so what you're, asking, what you're doing this evening is giving me permission to accept the low bid of those bonds. Uh, at any point up until that time, we can back out of this process if we if we needed to. We can back out of it up until that point. But after that point, I think our you know we're certainly making the final decision that we're going to construct those those safe rooms. Uh, but we should have the funds by the end of the May, and we anticipate the beginning of construction of these two eight elementary safe rooms to begin sometime in May or June, and they will be completed by August of 2018. Um, I think you already know this board, but just in case, there is a little difference in the safe room that we're building at Marguerite Van. Uh, because of the location of the cafeteria in the kitchen and because of where we might put the safe room to begin with, we believe that we can expand the, uh, the footprint of the safe room there at Marguerite Van and give them more cafeteria space. Uh, unfortunately, we can't. there's not a way to do that at any of the other buildings, but at that building we can, so you know we're going to... Uh, Margaret Van is also the school that we're uh, going to begin, or we have already begun doing renovations in. Uh, and so that's the, our next elementary school to do renovations in. So we would, we would in that particular safe room, we would also try to make sure that the uh, interior finishes look a little nicer. It's going to be a cafeteria, a place for PTO to meet, et cetera. Uh, so the finishes might be similar to this room as opposed to more concrete walls that you would see in the other safe rooms that are going to be used for PD. So, 
I uh, would be more than happy to answer any questions for you. If you don't have any questions, then we would need a motion that you have before you approved for the uh, for the uh, uh, process to go forward. Board, we've had a lot of information in the past on this. Uh, I'm assuming that everyone understands what we're voting on tonight. So uh, I'm going to stumble through this. Carl forgot to bring his reading glasses. And I hope I can read this. But this is the motion at hand, okay? Motion to submit an application. I may have to have you do this. Would you do that for me? <laughs> Motion to submit an application for a permit to issue bonds with related documents for $10 million in construction bonds to the State Department of Education and to employ First Security Beardsley as fiscal agent and to authorize the superintendent of schools to accept or reject the best bid submitted in connection with the public sale of the proposed bonds in consultation with the fiscal agent. You did a great job. <laughs> this is a useful thing, lies and things like that. We appreciate it very much. Um, I struggle without these things, so thank you. I have been through this too. Okay, um, Mr. Superintendent, we have uh, a legislative report. Well, we, we, we need to pass that motion. Oh, I thought we did oh, that. So moved. Okay. 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 All in favor of that, raise your hand. Say so that I can say second. Aye. Okay, you motion. He's the motion on the second. Aye. Okay. Aye. Aye. Okay. Sorry about that, y'all. It's all right, Carl. When you pass the book, something happens. And Mr. Barger's got a cold, too, so. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, I'd like to give you a brief report on the current legislative session that is occurring in Little Rock, Arkansas at this point. 135 of our uh, 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 fellow citizens are in Little Rock uh, trying to establish law. It's always an interesting time. Began in January and should conclude sometime in March, we would think. And thank you, Mr. Barter, as our uh, uh, advocate for keeping us up to speed and, and making sure those emails to uh, about legislation get out to the school board. Uh, I'm going to cover a few board uh, bills this evening, board, and if there's others that are of interest to you, let me know and I'll try to find out more information about those and let you know about those. But at the current time, our administrators association is tracking 124 different bills that have been filed that have something to do with education. Uh, so it's a lot, uh, but it seems to me that actually there are fewer bills uh, of substance than we are accustomed to seeing, and, but I would think that it'll probably crank up and, and it'll start whirlwind by, by March. Uh, we're not going to visit all 124 of those bills tonight. I don't think you want me to do that, uh, especially since uh, uh, Scott has some, some evening plans to go to UCA for, for a performance with his girlfriend, or his wife, excuse me. <laughs> So we're not going to cover those uh, tonight, and but some we're, gonna, we're not going to cover because they're just not of substance and they're not going to be of any particular interest and they don't have any legs to begin with. And some uh, are limited and minor and their focus is really not pertinent to us. So some general comments that I want to make and then I'll, I'll try to move quickly through some, some other comments about these bills. Generally the legislature has decided uh, how much additional funding we will receive and that's one thing that is always critical for us to begin listening to. And as you know, board, we receive uh, our largest amount of money from the state is what's called foundation funding. And that funding is uh, based on how many students we have, larger, comp more complicated formula than that, but it's basically on a per student basis. And they, uh, they've roughly decided that they will um, give us an increase of $67 per student in the fiscal year 18, and then $68 in fiscal year 19. That's not finalized, it's not, it's not voted on in, in, in law, but that's uh, what we might get. Uh, currently, we receive $6,646, and so they're really calculating a 1% increase uh, for each of those, each of those years. Uh, that's far below the uh, inflationary rates or consumer price index, but uh, that's basically all we're going to get. Uh, there will not be any increases in NSLA funding if they, things go the way that it looks. Uh, ELL funding, that's where our English language learners will increase $7 by students for the first year, but no increase the second year. ALE funding would increase $80 the first year, but no increase the second year. And professional development funding, uh, right now, it doesn't look like we're going to get anything additional in those those uh, two years. Also, Board, I'll tell you that, that our, we have a, 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 a department in, in Little Rock having to do with facilities, and they, they distribute what's called partnership funding that helps districts build 
uh, schools, and it does not look that there's much of an appetite to continue that funding in a significant way. And so I would anticipate that there would be increases in the ability for districts to qualify for partnership funding in the future. Uh, and quite frankly, I think the General Assembly has less focus on public education than they ever have since I've, I've been here and in, in looking at what happens in the Little Rock. Uh, they are focused on other things and you know, perhaps other things are important, but I believe the most important responsibility they have is the education of 450,000 students in Arkansas. So let me give you a couple bills that are of particular interest that you may have heard about already. House Bill 1002 is by Mark McElroy, and that is what we call the school bus seatbelt law. And it would require, uh, or it would allow a patrons of the district to petition the board to have a millage vote to increase the millage of the district for the purpose of purchasing seat belts in school buses. It would only, uh, it would only uh, 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 pertain to new school buses that are purchased. Uh, we certainly could uh, purchase additional school bus uh, seat belts if we chose to. And we don't have to have this law to do so, but he's trying to provide a venue for patrons to be able to express their interest in, in school uh, seat belts. Now, I'll tell you, Board, if you want to stop and talk about that, we'll be here until about 9 o'clock. We have a whole lot of complicated issues going around that one. Uh, so I, I just tell you that that's out there, and it does appear that it's, it's, it's out of the House and over the, on the Senate side, so I would anticipate that being a, a law. Yes. I'm not going to bog us down with this, but I've got a number in my head. It's about seventeen thousand dollars to outfit a single bus with seat belts. Is that? Um, did I get that number messed up? I'm, maybe that number I was thinking is yeah, slightly yeah. less than that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's uh, per bus. Right. You know, and there's lots of complications in that board. We'll probably do need to go down that road at some point and figure out what we want to do. One funding question, if you don't mind. There, yes. there, there was a lot of discussion earlier about the. Yes. What, what happened? What was? Did that come to a resolution? Well, I think that I don't think there's any uh, current lost law, any current legislation mm -hmm. that would change catastrophic funding either to the good or the bad right now. Okay. No. So that seems to be a neutral issue. I think so. Okay. Catastrophic having to do with specialist students that are high, high needs students mm -hmm. that require an unusual amounts of of uh, knowledge. Senator Hendren is, is uh, been on trying to do something about cell phones in the schools, uh, and that'll be an interesting uh, thing. Paul's got two bills out there. <coughs> um, one bill that I think is of particular interest to many of us is House Bill 1154, which requires the Department of Ed to use additional funding for professional development for the purpose of, of, uh, of uh, establishing professional learning communities in schools. Um, and there's a lot to that one as well, Board. I'm not sure that that's the, in the state's best interest, but I frankly I think what they're trying to do is tap some money to go to a, a, a private company uh, to uh, teach us how to do professional learning communities better. Uh, we would probably not want that to happen. Uh, House Bill 1155 does not need to invest, but I think it's important to recognize that there are school districts that it would affect, and that's the teacher minimum salary schedule, to increase that minimum salary schedule for about 30 school districts in the state. Uh, they're asking that to be increased by $400, I believe, without giving those school districts additional funding. Uh, I think my last recollection is that about 15 of those school districts would be forced into fiscal distress uh, because of this bill by itself. Uh, and, and so uh, it's what we call an unfunded mandate, And uh, but it also does speak to the issue of, of the need for addressing salaries across the state, and in particular in some small districts that really fight to struggle, <coughs> fight and struggle to, to give our teachers, their teachers, good, good, uh, good salaries. The one that raises my blood pressure the most is House Bill 1222, and it's a voucher bill. And I don't know, if I've heard the governor say that he's not in favor of it, and I hope that he remains in that position. Um, but that, that particular bill would allow a, a private individual to donate money into a fund of some type and uh, receive a, a tax break for that, basically at 100%, uh, including federal and state tax breaks. And then others could uh, ask for money from that particular fund for the purpose of attending private schools. Um, and although I understand that private schools have their role, they are private and they're not public, and I think public funds need to go to public schools. And a tax break is a is taking away public funds, and I think it's a wrong direction for us as, as a state. Uh, and I hope that we can um, vigorously oppose anything having to do with voucher bills. There's a, a similar bill by Senator English, 
at Senator, Senator 112, which basically gives income tax deductions for schools, homeschooling expenses, private school tuition expenses, and other, uh, other expenses uh, that basically would allow a, a parent to have a tax break for their tuition into a private school. Uh, it sounds like a voucher bill by some other name, too. <coughs> uh, and I would never be uh, in favor of, of, of taking public money that needs to go to the children of our school districts and uh, putting it into private, uh, where there's no accountability for how that money is spent and no accountability for what the performance is of those students after they, they receive that money. Um, there is some spirit on the, uh, among the, the legislatures, of course, about tax reduction. Uh, there's a bill about reducing income tax, and I certainly would be happy to pay no taxes at all, but taxes are the price of a democracy that we pay to have streets and other things that, that we need. Uh, given the, the financial condition of the state and the revenue projections, I doubt that there would be any serious movement uh, going forward for any other tax reductions. You'll be interested in House Bill 1266, which has to do with school board members volunteering. This primarily has to do with volunteering as a coach, uh, and there's a process that you might go through if you were an individual to help a, a school out and be a coach or assistant coach in, in, in one of the minor sports or even in the other sports. And basically, there are, this particular person wants to allow you to do that. I'm not quite sure about the wisdom of, of that um, and whether you would really want to be out there and on the sideline with our coaches or uh, et cetera. And, and frankly, if there ever were an issue with that coach, I would hate for you to have stood alongside them uh, in, in coaching. That would be difficult. So. That sounds very uncomfortable. Yeah, I, I would not want. To, I would repeat for everybody concerned. It'd be uncomfortable for you and for them as well. Just being the headset. Oh, that's what you want. To do. <laughs> <laughs> we'll let you wear the headset, but you can't listen to it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Say something like, okay, now walk that way. You know, walk to the 20. <laughs> there are um, well over 20 teacher retirement bills that have already been introduced. And uh, I'll tell you that this is extremely interesting to all of us. Uh, I'll tell you that, that the, one of the greatest benefits that we have for our employees and for our teachers is the teacher retirement system. It is incredible. And it's a benefit that when you begin teaching, you don't really understand. But when you get to the end of your career, you understand how very valuable it is to have uh, have uh, teacher retirement. We have two board members that are former uh, teachers and administrators, and, and uh, every month, <coughs> every month they get a check that's deposited in, into their into their account. Uh, it's very dependable. It's been a very very uh, very healthy uh, teacher retirement system over the past. But actuaries are beginning to tell them that they need to be more conservative about revenue and expenditures, that they need to cut benefits and find a way to increase revenue into the system. I might could argue that, but I, I will not. Uh, but I think there's the essence of many of these bills is to put more authority into the teacher retirement board to make some uh, uh, perhaps nimble changes in, in the system that would change the benefit to the good or to the bad and change a uh, uh, you know, revenue stream to the good or the bad. Uh, perhaps there's too much authority that's given to the to the board as opposed to taking away from the legislature. Legislature, uh, but that it will be very interesting for all of us to watch. Uh, we certainly want a, a healthy teacher retirement system for all of our employees. Uh, they all look forward to that and want that to happen when they uh, choose retirement. But at the end of the day, we also don't want to uh, to cause such a significant burden on either our employees or on our district either by the withholding of benefits or the increasing of, of payments that would uh, negatively affect them. So we're going to watch very closely to the retirement bills. Could I jump in? Sure, uh, please do. Um, I told you all a given out today that I had questioned about the one that uh, maybe taken away the COLA. Yes. Yes. I do not like that. I've already voiced my opinion. Right. We work too hard for that. Well, some of the interpretations are that, that won't affect anybody um, before 2008. But we have a lot of people that are going to retire. If that ever comes about, it's, it's going to be bad for them. Um, and I'm not sure that that's the name of some way of getting an even lower bill. But that's not good. That's like giving a baby a candy bar and letting them eat half of it and taking it away from it. But we've been used to it. Right. And, uh, 
you people might want to uh, talk to your representative on the Teacher Retirement Board and voice your concern about that. Uh, if you want me to send you what I sent out to the board, I wouldn't mind doing that. But that's something we need to watch for. Diane, I'm sure that you would like to maintain that code, get the benefit from it, you know, uh, later years. So, uh, anyhow, that that one is just, I think they need to leave it alone. You know, we work too hard for that. We pay them a lot of money. You know. They need to find some some other way of coming up with doing that. You know, there, there will continue to be healthy conversation about these teacher retirement bills, I can guarantee you that. State to go to meeting tomorrow afternoon, and uh, I'm quite sure that these bills will be will be discussed. The, we certainly don't want the teacher retirement to go belly up, and we certainly don't want legislature to step in and say we're going to change it from a defined benefit to a defined uh, defined contribution plan. Uh, no, but this is this is another three-hour discussion uh, topic. Very quickly, there's uh, several curriculum bills that you might be interested in. There's House Bill 1442, which has to do with requiring us to basically teach a personal finance class as a earned course credit for graduation. Uh, uh, House Bill 1456, you'll love this one, creates a waiver for a student so that the parent can sign off on PE. Uh, if the parent believes that the child has uh, done enough physical activity at home. You're kidding me. No, I'm not kidding. Uh, <laughs> and I hated Kid made up his bed this week, so I think he's done that. Uh, there's another bill that would change the number of, of arts classes in seventh and eighth grade for uh, arts and visual arts. Uh, there's another one that uh, would allow a school district to develop a plan for high school course credit based on demonstration of competency in a subject without completing hours of classroom instruction. In other words, you could step out of a, of a high school course. Not sure about that one. Um, Senate Bill 178 is interesting. It prohibits using student scores from the writing portion of the ACT Aspire in calculating uh, what a, a school district or a school might, might do as far as their performance. Basically, what, what Senator, Senator Files is trying to do is to remove the writing portion of ACT Aspire uh, from consideration for a couple of years because it's problematic. You know, I'll tell you the Department of Education is opposed to it, and I don't think that'll happen. Uh, but it's interesting to listen to it. Senate Bill 251, I think, is interesting because it removes the responsibility for college remediation. College remediation removes that. You'll be interested in House Bill 1457, which allows a school district to implement a pilot program for alternate instructional methods on days when school is closed due to inclement weather. So perhaps if the bill passes, maybe we could figure out a way for students to work online during the snow days so we didn't have to make it snow day later on. Yes, they do. Yeah. Might be something we want to, uh, we want to consider. Uh, this is just what's called a shell bill. In other words, it's been introduced and it has no real content to it, but it has to do with amending provisions concerning school elections. That's Senate Bill 287, and we'll just uh, look at that one and see what happens as far as school board elections are concerned. And I'll tell you, and I, I want to hurry to a conclusion on this part, uh, because the most striking thing that's occurring to me has to do with bills regarding constitutional amendments. By law, the legislature can refer up to three constitutional amendments to the popular to the people for to be voted on the next general election. <coughs> it's clear that some of them are trying to fundamentally change the state's responsibility regarding public education and they are there's constitutional amendments that are proposed out here. And let me just give you a little bit more of a background. Over the last 20 years, various versions of the lengthy litigation have been going on in our state, lots of lawsuits. Uh, the basis for those suits brought against the state by the school district is a phrase in the Constitution of the state of Arkansas, and it reads thusly. Intelligence and virtue being the safeguards of liberty and the bulwark of a free and good government, the state shall ever maintain a general, suitable, and efficient system of free public schools and shall adopt all suitable means to secure the people the advantages and opportunities of education. So, Senate Joint Resolution 3. Senate Joint Resolution 3 by Blake Johnson amends that particular uh, constitutional article that I just read to you, adding language 
that says that no legislative actions in supervising schools shall be held to violate the Constitution. Which basically they're saying is that the legislature can do what they want about public education and it will not be a constitutional violation. Which means that there's no constitutional basis for future litigation against the state of Arkansas. Senate Joint Resolution 5, get this one, Senate Joint Resolution 5 by Alan Clark designates the General Assembly as the sole and exclusive evaluator of whether the <coughs> public school system satisfies the requirements of the state constitution. So the legislature can determine whether they are constitutional or not. And you might be aware from, from civics that there's this three prongs of government, you know, the legislature, the executive, and the, the court system. And although I'm not one to go to court, uh, others in this state have gone to court in the past and forced the state of Arkansas to do what they should have done already as far as public education. Uh, and to take the opportunity of going to court in the future away, which is exactly what these, these, uh, these uh, constitutional amendments would do, I think is tantamount to walking away from public education. And perhaps in Conway, Arkansas, we might be able to survive without the protection of the courts, uh, but there are plenty of state districts in the state that will not be able to survive if the legislature says we're not responsible for you anymore. And that is exactly what these, these amendments are, are talking about. So if by chance these happen to get out, uh, then we would vigorously oppose them publicly and privately and hope with your support as well. And it is absolutely the wrong direction to, to give the legislature that amount of power as far as public education is concerned. So, Could I take a yes. they only vote out three potential amendments to the Constitution out of the Yes, that's correct. Um, and I, I think it's incumbent, incumbent upon us to contact legislators now before those decisions are made for, on, on which we get out. Absolutely. Not just waiting until after. Yes, yes thank you. You're, you're exactly right. <coughs> I, I, I just cannot imagine, you know, legislators walking away from children in the state of Arkansas. That is exactly what they're doing. Although they think they're protecting themselves from the courts. That's exactly what they're trying to do. It's like we can do whatever we want to and don't worry about the courts anymore. Checks and balances, ladies and gentlemen. We have a constitution with checks and balances to protect us from ourselves sometimes. If those are passed out or others are passed out, they'll be voted on in 2018 in November. Once the session is concluded, board, I will try to report back to you about what exactly happened and try to give you updates along the way. But any questions or other things that I can help you out with as far as the uh, legislative session? Thank you. I appreciate your patience. That went a little longer. Than Quite a bit longer than I, that I wanted to. The other uh, the part of my part of the agenda board has to do with these, uh, the financial report, and I'll just quickly tell you that, that uh, things continue to go well as far as the district is concerned. I believe we're on pace as far as our revenue is concerned, and I'll, I'll take you to the last page where we have year to year comparison. And the only variance that continues to, to show up really that's a major concern is property taxes. And you recall that that's going to be on there for the rest of the year because of what happened in July. We received less money in July because the previous July we received more money than we should have received. But otherwise, board, we are in, in sound financial condition. Any questions that I might answer? Thank you very much, board. And I guess uh, Chris Daniels is next up. Uh, we have some director reports. And Steve, I believe you're part of the Dr. Lamy, when I first started coaching, there was a high school coach that had a very good running back and uh, was highly recruited. And I'm not going to name the college or university, apparently this is true, uh, recruited this young man and offered the high school coach a job. And uh, they didn't say what he was going to do, but they did. He did not coach anything. The young man went to this university, played there. The coach uh, uh, was on staff. and. Did not really coach anything, but he walked the sideline with the with headsets on. It was not looked up to anybody. <laughs> I could work something out. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Murray Board. Uh, I'm presenting 2017-18 Athletic Handbook to study uh, for your approval of adoption next month. 
there's really been no significant changes to the handbook that was approved last year. The dates, as you notice, in yellow have been changed. This should be highlighted there on the screen. Uh, there's also been some late editing uh, that is highlighted in blue uh, to uh, uh, correct some grammatical and maybe some clarification points or a few of those as well. Uh, basically, it is the same book that we've had for the last year. It's just one that's studied in, uh, by other districts and uh, have used it over in a model for a lot of districts over the years uh, as their athletic any questions that, that you might have, feel free to contact me. Uh, and hopefully I can, can answer those or get in touch with you to uh, clear up anything that we have in there. Thank you, Steve. Good job, sir. Now we have Debbie. Good evening, board. Thank you for a few minutes of your time. I have a couple of policies I'd like to bring to you for your review. And they're in the, uh, the five, uh, this, the area of five, which is curriculum for our district. We have some other policies. We'll be making slight revisions. It's just legal uh, information, that type thing. The first one I want to bring to you tonight, that was 5.11 Digital Learning Courses. And I believe you have that quick little handout there. There's very little change. It doesn't change anything about the way we operate with our digital classes, but it does take out or strike out some of the language for highly qualified teachers. And that has to do with the change in licensure in the state. It doesn't change anything at all about the way we, we um, have our digital courses um, within the district. There's a few other word, word changes, a little bit of legal at the very end, but that's really all there is to that policy. The second policy that I bring to you tonight is, is our wellness policy. And um, Janet Taylor works with the wellness committee in the district, and that's called the School Nutrition and Physical Activity Advisory Committee. <laughs> We've had to look this up. I've had to look it up several times, and I even <laughs> underlined it in my notes so I would remember to tell you the name. <laughs> But uh, you'll see it in here as SN, whatever, a long acronym. But that's what we call our wellness committee. That's the same thing that Janet does for us. And she meets with that, the folks. Now, I, go to, I take this to Janet and have her take a look at it. Her committee looks at it. But there's very little change in our policy this year. Some slight revisions as far as the groups. So we already had those groups. They just outlined them slightly different. We already had all those folks on our wellness committee to begin with. The other uh, slight change that's in there, it's on page three of the policy, where that they actually add, um, encourage participation in extracurricular, encourage, encourage. We went ahead and put that in the policy. That is something that we do in the district. It's not required, it's just encouragement for our students and our parents and teachers. So we left that because that is recommended recommended by the school board association. <coughs> Those are the really the two main changes of policies that I'd like to bring to you. I do want to mention brief, briefly that um, the school board association updates their policies often. And so we just received some more policy changes on the 1st of January 20th. And I haven't had a chance to take, and this wellness policy has been revised and rewritten. I don't know that there's any substantial difference, but I need to take that back to Janet. So there's a possibility, if Dr. Murray decides it's worthy, that we may bring this back to you for an additional revision, or we may just wait and say, well, it's in the law, we're good to go, and we might bring that next year. But those are the two policies. Feel free to ask me any questions. They're up for your consideration, and I believe you'll vote on them on the next, at the next board meeting. The, um, you mind if I go on, Mr. Barger, to the next Good. curriculum? Okay. This is just a quick update for you, a rough draft, as you can see up there. And um, Dr. Murray, if you don't mind, just scroll down to the first colored charts. Right here. This is what our teachers participate in in the summer, our professional development. We plan this with uh, teachers when they're in the pacing. We plan it with the instructional facilitators. 
Our goal is to get this out by March 1 each year and to make that happen we start planning and working with teachers and principals in September and October. This is pretty intense. But here you can see what we have planned uh, for the alignment, the work that we see that teachers need or they tell us they want or any changes that are coming down. So the green is elementary. If you don't mind, just scroll down just a little bit more to the next color. I love that Sue Favorite puts this document together right here. She is quite amazing. The blue is your middle school. You can just keep scrolling down if you don't mind. And then you come to junior high, which is purple, and then the last one, of course, would be high school. That gives you an idea of what our teachers will be, will be participating in for the summer, when they'll be doing that, what the topics, the types of things they'll be uh, learning about, or collaborating. <coughs> but I hope you might find that of interest. This is just, you know, we do this in about an hour, and it's done, and that's all it takes to plan and design this. Just 30, 45 minutes to an hour, <laughs> and then you add about four months of work onto that. And then I will go ahead and say that uh, Miss Van also has a well developed <coughs> professional development for the special ed, which I didn't include on here, but um, some of the sessions will end up being on this calendar. All the sessions will be on the calendar. So we have it for all areas, not just the general. We have it for gifted. We have it. I know Ms. Van has, has done a lot of work with her team also. Just thought you might be interested in that, to know that your teachers in the Conway School District truly do work pretty diligently on their professional development. And the, there's one major thing we have to make sure we do. We need to get this out before they get their cruises planned. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Board. Any questions? Thank you, Deb. I tell you what, you've done an outstanding job ever since you've been hired here at this school district. You've been above and beyond. Seriously, what very impressive work you've done. So thank you. It's a team effort. Yes, it is, but it takes a leader. It keeps everybody on, on task and focus, and you've done that. Folks, the board will now go into an executive session to discuss a personnel matter. So uh, if you want to stick around, we'll be coming out. Or not but, uh, if uh, you want to stick around, you may do that. But at this time, we're going to take a